Hello. This is the first of two videos on the 109 years of Russian rule in Finland, this one dealing with the almost 90-year period from 1809 to 1898. I will talk about the development of the Finnish national identity and the period of civil war and independence in other videos, I hope. During the 18th century wars between Sweden and Russia, the Finnish lands had twice been occupied by the Russians. During the first occupation from 1714 to 1721, the Great Wrath, as the Finns came to call it, parts of Finland had been severely devastated, with the deliberate destruction of settlements, arbitrary brutality by officials, conscription into the army, and thousands deported into virtual slavery in Russia. Famine and disease had added to the people's woes, and it is estimated that the total Finnish population dropped by half a million to less than 400,000. Administration and traditional economic life collapsed. By comparison, a second occupation in 1743 under the Empress Elizabeth was relatively mild, and Elizabeth even talked of the idea of turning Finland into a Russian protectorate. Another war under the unpopular Swedish king, Gustav III, convinced some members of the Finnish elite that such an eventuality would be advantageous, and they began to conspire with the Russians, but nothing came of this. Finally, following a third occupation in 1808, during the period of the Napoleonic Wars, the then Russian Emperor, Alexander I, formally annexed Finland in March 1809, recognizing it as a grand duchy, separate from Russia, and, having received the allegiance of the members of the assembled Finnish Diet, made a declaration of assurance that he would protect their religion, fundamental laws, and traditional privileges. The Swedes, who had hitherto ruled the country, subsequently acknowledged their loss of Finland in their treaty with Russia to end hostilities. For most of the 19th century, the Grand Duchy of Finland existed as an autonomous entity within the Russian Empire. An appointed Finnish Senate regulated internal affairs, and acted as de facto government and Supreme Court. It was nominally chaired by a Russian governor-general, who acted as the Tsar's representative, but day-to-day -day business was conducted by the Finns themselves. Up until 1863, the sole language of administration was Swedish, reflecting traditional practice and the predominance of Swedish speakers in the Finnish elite. The Diet, a traditional body representing the country's four estates, nobles, burghers, clergy and peasants, having approved the transfer to Russian authority, was not called again until the 1860s. The small settlement of Helsinki was named as capital in 1812, and increasingly replaced Abo, or Turku in Finnish, as the center of national life. From the Russian standpoint, Helsinki had the advantage of being closer to St. Petersburg and further away from Sweden. New national institutions included a post office, a board of health, and the Bank of Finland, established in 1812. Separate Finnish military units were also allowed to be formed, in which the officers were Finns, although there were also Finns who chose to serve in the Russian army. Increasingly, Finns came to accept their new status. Russian rule was distant, and Finland enjoyed more independence than it had under the Swedes. A positive attitude towards Russia was enhanced by the gift of some borderlands with historic ties to Finland. During the reign of the Tsar Liberator, Alexander II, who reigned from 1855 to 1881, several significant developments occurred. In particular, he allowed the Finns to have their own currency, the Marka, established in 1860, separate from the ruble, and he also convened the Finnish Diet in 1863, after a break of over 50 years. Of major importance to the development of Finnish national consciousness, the Finnish language was also declared to be co-equal to Swedish as an official language in the Grand Duchy for certain purposes. More pragmatically, the Diet began to be called quite frequently, legislation in 1869 requiring it to be called at least once every five years, but in practice it met more often. Although still only mostly an advisory body, the Diet began to exercise real influence. Power remained with the Senate, and ultimately with the Russians, but the relatively frequent meetings of the Diet led to both the passing of an increasing amount of legislation, 
concerning Finnish economic, commercial and co educational policies and to the emergence of political parties, of which more later. The Diet also prodded the Senate into action on certain issues, such as the promotion of the Finnish language, so we can speak of the beginning of a certain balance of power. A further development in 1868 was the placing of the Bank of Finland under the Diet's authority, and in 1878 a small separate Finnish defence force was formed with the Finnish officer corps. Then in 1879 the electoral process regarding the Diet was relaxed and the urban franchise broadened. In contrast to his father, Alexander II's successor, Alexander III, who became emperor in 1881, was an autocratic reactionary. But whilst he annulled some of the legislative measures passed by the Finnish Diet, he did not apply his new policies of the Russification of non-Russian peoples to the Grand Duchy. The later application of Russification to Finland from 1898 onwards marked the beginning of a new chapter in the country's history and will be discussed separately. This long period, from 1863 to 1898, in which the Diet began to function as a legislative body, also saw the emergence of the first Finnish political factions, which gradually formed into distinct parties. Initially, the main issue of disagreement amongst the people of Finland concerned the status of the Finnish language, with Finnish proto-nationalists, the Fenomen, emphasizing the importance of Finnish as the national language, whilst their opponents, the Svenkamen, sought to preserve the traditional elite role of Swedish. Other issues began to assume importance from the 1870s onwards, with arguments about the economic and social policies to be adopted and the most effective stands to take in relation to Russian rule, but for many the language question remained the most important. Let me add a note on some of the socio-economic aspects of this period. Although the period of Russian rule provided the Finns with a long period of peace, which was sharply in contrast to the calamitous 18th century, Finland remained a poor and largely agricultural economy. The precariousness of rural life was vividly illustrated during the 1860s with two disastrous famine years in 1862 and 1867, both leading to widespread privation and the threat of starvation. For many, the only choices seemed to be to emigrate or to die. A massive tide of migration thus began, which saw hundreds of thousands of Finns moving to North America during the period of Russian rule. Nevertheless, this was a period of population growth, a total population of less than 900,000 in 1809, rising to almost 2.4 million by the 1890s, and around 3 million at the time of independence in 1917. There was also economic growth, with the building of railways and growing overseas demand for finished timber products, including sawn timber, pit props and paper. Inefficient traditional farming methods, including medieval-style strip farming, were also modernized and farm machinery and credit facilities were introduced. In many areas, self-sufficient rural communities based on subsistence agriculture came to be replaced by more modern farms serving urban markets with dairy products and other commodity needs. Although the Finnish economy was greatly stimulated by these developments, the timber boom and land consolidation heightened rural divisions between a minority of owner-occupiers who were able to adopt modern farming methods and a great majority, still two-thirds of the rural population at the time of independence, of poor peasant smallholders and landless labourers. There was as yet no significant urban working class, but a socialist party, the Social Democrats, came to enjoy wide popular support amongst the rural poor. Thank you for listening. I intend to talk about the final 19 years of Russian rule from 1898 to 1917 in the next video.